Hey, thanks for clicking in. Uh, I'm Jarrell. Uh, I run Sun Grand Studios out of Sydney, Australia. Why don't I have an Australian accent? I don't know. That's a mystery for another day. Anyway, if you're interested in, like, game development, game design, you know, how games are made, what goes on behind the scenes, how a game comes together, cool. Hey, uh, we're going to start uh, talking about all sorts of uh, things related to game development. Uh, right now we're working on a framework uh, that we've called the Eventide RPG Framework. It's um, going to be a multi-platform RPG framework. Uh, right now it's just staying in-house. Maybe if, um, you know, it gets uh, some demand, we uh, might set it up to be sold for uh, developers to, um, that use Unity. So we use Unity. Um, it's uh, a, a really great uh, sort of a setup. Um, pretty intuitive. Uh, I think the learning curve is, is probably one of the, one of the better ones uh, out of different environments that I've used. And uh, with Eventide RPG, what we've done is we've implemented um, all sorts of different scriptable objects. Um, if you're familiar with using Unity, and if you haven't used scriptable objects yet, really, really look into it. It's going to make your game development uh, much faster and much stronger. So um, I'll go ahead and uh, go guerrilla style and guerrilla tactic style and just uh, point the uh, little camera at the screen here and we'll show you a couple things that we've got going on uh, that makes uh, an RPG work. If you don't know much about video game development uh, yet, you know, stick around and, uh, you know, you could pick up a few uh, uh, tips and tricks here and there. So the way uh, Eventide RPG Framework is set up to create an RPG game, uh, really Unity will let you create any kind of game that you can imagine. Uh, creating your own sort of framework, uh, which would be a set of tools and um, sort of um, functions uh, and templates that would let you create a particular genre of game uh, faster with more structure. So, uh, say for example, uh, we did uh, want to create a new character, so we would uh, go ahead and we would uh, we can do that by uh, just uh, creating, uh, going to Avatar RPG, and creating a new character. You can see that we've uh, created some sort of templates there as well. So we open up uh, the uh, character uh, sort of creation thing here. We can enter a name for the character. We can enter a small portrait, which would uh, be used, you know, just on the game menu. Uh, large portraits. If you like games like Tales of uh, well, the Tales series, they tend to have a large portrait when you go to the character select screen. That's pretty cool. And uh, we've also specified that you can have you know different genders in there: male, female, genderless. I don't know if you you know want to make like a, a Pokemon clone, then you've you know got to have that genderless option in there as well. Uh, map prefabs. Um, this is uh, what links our uh, our objects. Uh, say for example, the character that represents you know. Uh, your character running around on the map, and also their graphics for when they go into battle. Now we open up our stats here, and uh, we've developed the Eventide framework. Uh, we might uh, polish this up a little bit, but right now it's pretty simple. You have your starting uh, HP, so let's say that you your character starts out with 24 HP, and at level 99, uh, maybe his HP goes to 249. Now the way uh, we've set this up as well is we have global uh, game value stored in what we call the uh, Eventide core. And the core stores uh, all the important information. Uh, you can specify maximum character level. Right now, maximum character level is 99. If you went into the core, you can change the maximum level to, say, 200. And that way, it would show up there. Uh, the level up system calculates uh, the actual level that the character is. And then it sort of uh, interpolates where their stats should be in between their starting stat and their maximum stat. We also have options for equipment. Uh, what's pretty cool here is that you can specify as many new item subtypes as you want for your weapon. So say those are the existing weapons that we've got there. If we want to create um, a new uh, weapon, then we simply go to our core. Let me find our core here. So I'll go ahead and open up our core. And uh, we go to our elements list. So we go ahead and close that. We'll go to our uh, database of elements. Uh, actually, no, what am I doing? I want to go to uh, weapon subtypes. I got confused there for a second. So let's go ahead and open up database weapon subtypes. All right, so you see we've got those there. The last one there is shotgun. What we want to do is add another one. So we're going to increase that number from 14 to 15. You can see it sort of clones the last value in there. So we want a new weapon type, and this weapon type is going to be... Uh, I don't know. Lasers! Alright, cool. Lasers is now a new type of weapon. You can have a description for that weapon subtype and a little graphic icon you can use to represent it in menus if you would not like. Now let's go back to our uh, character editor and if we go to equipment options uh, you'll see that lasers show up there. So currently with this character, uh, Bo, that's just, uh, that's Bo actually from Breath of Fire. It's just 
cool temporary graphics while we develop the uh, framework here. Currently, he's unable to equip any of those things. If you put a tick mark there, boom, 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 look at that. All of a sudden, that character will be able to equip those items. Uh, you can do the same thing for shields, uh, armors, helmets, all that stuff. Uh, we're still uh, programming this, so there's more values to go in there. But uh, yeah, you can dynamically add more stuff, and you can control your characters likewise. When you're done editing your values, you do want to hit that save character button, or you're going to have a bad time. Now we uh, do have our uh, elemental uh, alignment as well, and that's pretty sweet. Uh, you can adjust the uh, amount of uh, sort of uh, strength that this character has for a particular element. So you can see if this character were to cast any spell, it would do base 100% damage. All right, let's say this character is not good with fire, uh, then all of his fire spells would be at like you know, 56%, or if you wanted to make this character really strong with a particular element, all of their, you know, fire spells would be, you know, 250% times their strength. So that's a cool thing there. In the same way, we add weapon subtypes. We can add more element subtypes as well, and they will automatically show up in the list there. So that, that saves a lot of time in development. Uh, and we split the offense and defense, so they can have different biases uh, for the elements. So receiving fire damage or receiving water damage. That's pretty sweet. And we have our actions learnable by level. This is where we get to determine the abilities that the characters use. Uh, so if we have the level to learn, if we have that at zero, that character will always have that ability no matter what they start at. It's easy to add more. Let's go ahead and add another value here. We're going to increase that to seven. You can see he's got his basic stuff there. Uh, and we want to add a new ability, so let's go ahead and just uh, do a quick example of how the Eventide frameworks, uh, framework works here. So we're going to just go into our standard skills. I'll go ahead and create a new uh, combat action. So we go into combat actions, we have basic type, magic, and skill. And uh, the framework can be extended if you wanted to have more categories, absolutely. We'll just go basic for now. Now this is, is where all, all the good stuff really happens right here. Let's just call this, I don't know, Pim Slap. There we go. All right. Action name is going to be Pimp Slap. Okay. So there's a whole lot that, that goes on here. You can also enter a description if you so choose. You can uh, say this is a battle thing, so we don't want that usable on the world map. Uh, you have um, a cost cooldown time, startup time, all that sort of stuff. Uh, icon to sort of represent it. And you can change the stat on on which um, the strength of this uh, uh, action is determined. So if it's a healing spell, you want to put it on magic. You know, say if you have a, an attack called body slam, you know, maybe you want your character's weight to determine how strong uh, that action is. Uh, you can also have this uh, affect the user. Uh, sort of the cost, so it might cost them some health or some mana or some stamina, all that stuff. Here you can select the targeting, uh, whether they can target themselves or enemy of their groups, and whether it's a uh, multiple attack. Options for the next menu lets you open up other menus, which means you, you can have more than just, you know, one action. So instead of having one thing that says, you know, items, oh, there's only one action that opens items. Maybe you can have one character that's like a chemist, and maybe he has a special move where items opens up, but he, you know, doubles the strength of the item that's used, etc., etc. Now you have occurrence lists. Now, if you're familiar with uh, a game like, say, for example, Final Fantasy VII, a lot of attacks in Final Fantasy VII were multi-hit. Uh, and what that means is, say, for example, Cloud's uh, Final Limit Break, uh, Omni Slash, if you're familiar with that, it hits, like, I don't know, a buttload of times. By default, when you create a new a combat action in the Eventide framework, it has one action occurrence. Let's say you wanted the attack to hit two times. Let's say you had, you know, 2x cut or 4x, you know, hit or whatever. So let's say we want the attack to hit two times, right? So we enter two in there. You can see it's added another element. So action delay time. So after one second, the first hit will activate. Let's go ahead and change the second hit. So let's say after three seconds, nah, that's too much lag. After two seconds, the attack will hit again. Now you have your action uh, effect modifier. If you leave that at one, uh, then that attack will 
hit for 100% strength the entire way. We'll, we'll go ahead and, and, and modify that into a slider at some point. Um, but because it hits twice, let's make it a little bit more fair. Let's say that first attack will hit for, you know, 75%, and then the second attack will hit for 75%, uh, which means that attack will hit for a total of, you know, 150 times the strength of a normal attack. Now, you do also need to define your base damage. So you can have it damage, you know, your uh, HP. And you can also have it damage mana, stamina, and you can also have it affect stats. So you can reduce the enemy's power. Or if you uh, make a combat action that's only allowed to say it's only allowed to target yourself, you can boost your own stats that way. So that's pretty sweet as well. Um, there are chances uh, to inflict uh, status ailments and whatnot. Uh, we still have quite a bit more programming to do on that. But that is, um, that's uh, where we are uh, at this point in development with the Eventide framework. Now let's uh, go ahead and see this in action. So we've created Pim Slap, and what we will do is we'll go ahead and put that on a character. So we will go into our data list here. We'll go ahead and go into Cat right now. Uh, cat is queued up as the first character that comes in. So we go to Actions, Learnable by Level. Let's go ahead and open that up. Okay, now you can see we've uh, sorted out there. We don't really care about having Escape in there as an action. We'll go across. We will look for our Pimp Slap, which is our new skill. All we do is drag and drop it in there. And that should fit on the screen there. So we will go ahead and uh, save our character. Let's go ahead and run the game and let's see if we get uh, Pimp Slap in there correctly. Alright, so we have the game running on there, we have our game menu and whatnot, so we've got a just a testing room here. Go ahead and talk to this fellow and he should start a battle for us right here. Hello? There we go. Alright, so you can see we uh, trigger our uh, battle here and that's the top screen. Now we do, uh, with the, right now this uh, framework is uh, focused on development for the 3DS, so the actual battle system is built for the top and bottom screen. Uh, let's see here, so it looks like we have a different character that loaded up their skills. Let's try and find out which character has this uh, ability loadout, and then we'll try and give them Pim Slap, alright, let's cancel out of that. Ah, so here's what happened actually. Uh, he actually, uh, well, Cat doesn't have those abilities. You can see we enter the level at 20, uh, which means that character is not at level 20 yet, so they actually don't have that ability. So the game um, can quickly determine whether or not they should have that ability yet. So let's go ahead and put that down to zero. And now, let's open up our bottom screen, and you can see we now have Pim Slap on the list. So that's where we are uh, with development at the moment with the Eventide framework. Uh, if you were interested in that, hey, stick around. We'll talk about a little bit more if you're uh, also a Unity developer. You know, high five, cool. Uh, I hope we had some useful ideas for you there. And, uh, you know, feel free to ask questions or, or whatnot or comment uh, if you have any thoughts on that sort of stuff. We will be working more on the uh, Eventide framework because that's a full-time thing for us. Uh, and it is uh, specifically catering towards a Nintendo 3DS. We've got uh, an RPG that's uh, coming up for that console, so stick around. It'll be a, a horror RPG, which I think is, uh, is a pretty fun sort of a, a, a thing that doesn't happen very often. Um, next time we'll cover a few more of the aspects and other things that go into um, creating different parts of an RPG and, and games in general. So, hey, thanks a lot for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed that. And, uh, yeah, stick around for more game development stuff. See you next time.